Hey there guys, what's happening? So, um, just wanted to talk a little bit more about some of the events of uh, of boxing last night. I already covered the the Josh Taylor fight with, um, with Miguel Vasquez, I already gave my post-fight review. But um, I want to talk a little bit more about that and a, a little bit more about Josh Taylor. But before I get there, I just want to talk a little bit about Artur Baturbiev, who became a world champion last night. Now... I wasn't able to watch the fight live, unfortunately, and uh, I was looking forward to the fight, but it was in America, it was on late, and uh, I'd already stayed up to watch the, the Josh Taylor fight and whatnot, so I, I just couldn't be bothered. I couldn't be bothered tuning into the Peturbiev one, but I managed to watch it today, but it, it wasn't in great quality, but I got the gist of what was going on. It was a pretty poor quality video, but it is what it is, but I got to see the fight, and um, you know... I always felt he was going to beat Enrico Coelho. You know, I made a prediction video about the fight. I, I picked Artur Baturbiev to win the fight by a late stoppage. Um, I knew that the uh, style of Enrico Coelho, who is um, very one-dimensional and quite basic and quite conventional, I knew that it was only a matter of time before Artur Baturbiev would figure him out and break him down. So, uh, yeah, the fight didn't surprise me at all. It was pretty much what I expected would happen. But one concern I've always had about Artur Baturbiev is I was never sure whether or not Baturbiev would have the stamina to be able to carry his power late in fights because, you know, we've seen that with uh, several other fighters where obviously they punch very hard for three or four rounds and then in the later rounds they don't really seem to have the same snap. You know, they seem to gas out. And Baturbiev is a very big, heavily muscled, light heavyweight who... Looks as if he could be a cruiserweight, so um, yes, uh, it's unclear how much longer he's going to be at 175, so I wasn't quite sure how his stamina would be in the later rounds, but it was encouraging signs. Thankfully, he was able to carry the power through to the 12th round where he was able to score a knockout against Coelling, who was quite cagey and had a, a tight guard and was trying to survive. Um, you know, Baturbi have just... Uh, completely shut him down and broke him down and, and got the stoppage and it was it was destructive it was it was a, a very good display from from Baturbiev of uh, punching power and accuracy so yeah I think he's certainly um, a great addition to that division um, he's a world champion now of course uh, after the belts were vacated by Ward and um, yeah he along with um, along with Dmitry Bivol is another Russian world champion which is good and uh, I, you know, that's an interesting fight for the future, but I think that Dimitri Bivol has um, mandatory obligations with the WBA. Uh, I believe that Sullivan Barrera is his main challenger. I'll need to double-check that, but I think Sullivan Barrera is his mandatory. Uh, yeah, but I'll double-check that one. Um, and that's an interesting fight there, because Sullivan Barrera is certainly a step up in glass for, for Dimitri Bivol, who's only had 12 professional fights, so that'll be an interesting one. And um, I know that Sullivan Barrera and Baturbiev were set to fight in the past, but the fight never happened. It never materialised. So perhaps if uh, if Sullivan Barrera doesn't go the if he doesn't go the uh, the WBA route to face Bivol, he can maybe face Baturbiev instead. That'd be a really great fight. I think Baturbiev is going to be with top rank now, so uh, I don't know if they'll be able to work out a deal. But whatever, you know, it's it's interesting. We'll see what happens. Um, I certainly think that would be a great fight either way. Um, I believe uh, Sergey Kovalev is going to be fighting Shabransky. That's going to be for the WBO title, I think, the vacant WBO title that, uh, of course, Kovalev used to hold that he won from Nathan Cleverly. So um, that's an interesting one there. Um, if Kovalev, as, as long as Kovalev isn't, um, you know, as long as he's taking the fight seriously and as long as he's keeping himself in shape and as long as he hasn't allowed himself to be mentally discouraged after being robbed twice against Andre Ward, um, as long as, yeah, like, like I said, as long as he's not mentally discouraged by that and as long as he's focused, he should he should handle Shabransky pretty easily and he should stop him early, to be honest. But I might make a prediction video, I might not, but Vyacheslav Shabransky, in my opinion, while he's a decent boxer on the back foot, and a decent athlete. I think he has uh, quite a shaky chin. Uh, he's also quite wide open to the body. You know, he's one of these big, tall, lanky, light heavyweights who 
again, looks like a guy who really should be at cruiserweight. And I think that Kovalev is just so much better skilled. I think Kovalev is, is the far technically superior fighter of the two. Kovalev also is the bigger puncher. With the better jab, he's better on the inside. Um, and, and I just think that Kovalev should break him down, to be honest. I think he should break him down. And I don't see why he shouldn't stop him in five rounds. I really don't. I mean, I, I don't think that Sullivan Barrera, who stopped um, Shabransky, I don't think that Sullivan Barrera is anywhere near as big a puncher as Kovalev. So, or as good a boxer as Kovalev. So I, I think that Kovalev should, should deal with Shabransky. If he doesn't, then he should just retire, in my opinion. Um, you know, it's a real shame, obviously, what happened to him with the with the Andre Ward situation where they set him up and the, uh, you know, the scumbag, ghetto trash, American judges and American referees all conspired together to take the titles off of Kovalev. You know, you had a decision robbery the first time out and um, a premature stoppage on fouls the second time out. So, you know, you put that aside and Kovalev really should be an undefeated fighter. So he should be the number one guy in the division. But... Um, you know, it's it's tough to say how he will come back from that mentally, you know, with all the shenanigans surrounding those fights. But he, he should he should be able to deal with Shabransky. I mean, come on, Kovalev, Kovalev's got the boxing ability and the athleticism to deal with a fighter like Shabransky, in my opinion. I can't see him losing. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens there. Uh, but this light heavyweight division, now that that pussy Andre Ward is gone, uh, and I hope this video doesn't get fucking flagged for me using the word pussy because... For whatever reason, every time I upload a video now, it's it's getting, <laughs> you know, I'm getting fucking little messages saying it's been reported, it's it's unsuitable or whatnot. It's probably because I swear a lot in my videos. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's to do with that. But yeah, hopefully this video doesn't get fucking taken down. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, thanks thanks to Andrew Ward retiring, this division is actually hotted up, and we've got some. Um, interesting unifications in in the potential near future. So, um, yeah, and, and all these guys, apart from Adonis Stevenson and Badu Jack, of course, who uh, recently vacated his belt to avoid Dimitri Bivol, and in a surprising move, I didn't see that coming. Uh, I thought that Badu Jack would have taken the fight against Dimitri Bivol. I thought that Badu Jack was tough, but obviously Badu Jack didn't think he could beat Dimitri Bivol, so he vacated the belt, and that was that was very disappointing. I was hoping to see that fight, and um, yeah, you got Adonis Stevenson there. He's still the WBC champion after all these years. Uh, Adonis Stevenson's a good fighter. He is. Uh, you know, I, I've not got anything against him as a fighter. I think he's entertaining. He's fun to watch. He's a power puncher. Um, he's 40 years old now, so it's it's you know it's unclear. How much longer he's got left in the sport because uh, you know a fighter who relies on power and athleticism at 40 years old it's only a matter of time before he starts to slip so um it's interesting to see what's going to happen with him too um i know i, I think he has a, a mandatory obligation to face um what's his name uh, what's that guy's name uh, elidi alvarez in canada uh, that'll be an old canada fight I, i'd like to see that fight um I don't think that Adonis Stevenson's too keen on it, though, for whatever reason. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens there. I, I know there's talks about a potential Badu Jack Adonis Stevenson fight. Um, that, that was one of the reasons why a lot of people claim Badu Jack vacated the belt. Personally, I think he just didn't want to fight Dimitri Bivol. I mean, uh, if he'd have beaten Dimitri Bivol to defend his title, he could have gone to the negotiating table against Stevenson with a belt. And um, that would have made him. I mean, that would have got him a bigger piece of the piece of the split, wouldn't it? A bigger piece of the pie for the for the uni, for it being a unification with uh, with Stevenson, since he was bringing a belt to the table. But for whatever reason, that ain't happening. So um, yeah, this light heavyweight division, man, it's 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 really hot enough. I'm intrigued to see what's going on. Obviously, you've got Alexander Vostik in, in in the mix too. He's a he's a great contender at the moment. So. Yeah, let me know what you guys think about that division. So, but back to Josh Taylor. I want to talk about Josh Taylor a little bit. So, I had a, a conversation on several forums today on Facebook and whatnot. Um, because I keep saying that I think Josh Taylor is, in my opinion, the best fighter in the UK. Uh, a lot of people disagree with that, and that's, that's, that's fair enough. I mean, the guy isn't a world champion yet. You've got other fighters... Um, Somebody in the, the comment section of a YouTube video said to me that 
I mean, how can I say that Josh Taylor is the best fighter when you've got the likes of Anthony Joshua, you've got the likes of Terry Flanagan, uh, Billy Joe Saunders, Liam Smith, um, you know, all these guys who have won world titles. You know, they've, they've had world titles and, and Josh Taylor has only had 11 fights and hasn't picked up a title yet. Look, that's all That's all well and good, okay? That's, that's, it's a fair point, but people's criterias are always different when it comes to this sort of thing. When I think of all the fighters in the UK right now, I can't think of anybody who is as naturally talented or as technically sound as Josh Taylor. Yes, Anthony Joshua is the number one guy at heavyweight. Yes, he's a heavyweight champion of the world, but does he have the kind of athletic ability or the kind of technique that Josh Taylor has? I don't think so. And I mean, yeah, Carl Frampton has been a world champion, but does Carl Frampton have anywhere near the kind of um, technical skill and just, just the natural uh, fighting ability that Josh Taylor has? I really don't see it. I mean, Josh Taylor, to me, has better defense than Frampton. He's never been down. Um, you know, he's, he's stopping guys that just don't get stopped. I mean, uh, his last fight against seasoned former world champion Miguel Vasquez, a guy who's never been stopped before, and he's been in the ring with serious competition. Guys like Canelo Alvarez and Timothy Bradley and Mickey Bay and Bredis Prescott, all of these guys can punch. None of them even came close to stopping Miguel Vasquez. So Josh Taylor, to me, has the, the, the abilities of a seasoned professional in just in just 11 professional fights. Um, I mean, O'Hara Davis was, was considered a step up for him. That was considered a 50-50 fight. In fact, a lot of people felt that O'Hara Davis was going to stop Josh Taylor, and it was the other way around. So, to me, Josh Taylor, just based on the, the aesthetics of it all, based on what I see in the ring, I think he is a far better fighter than anybody else in the UK. I really think so. I, and I think that you give this guy another couple of years, and, and he will be a you know, a potential pound-for-pound-level fighter. And, and I've noticed, too, a lot of people in America have actually clocked on to Josh Taylor because that's the kind of skill Josh Taylor has, OK? He's really capturing the imagination of boxing fans. And, I mean, I, I'll probably be accused of bias because he's one of my, my uh, you know, one of my fighters from, from my region. I'm, I'm obviously from, I'm from Glasgow. He's from Edinburgh, which is up the road. So, um, you know, we're both Scottish, but th that's not why I say he's the best fighter in the UK, OK? There's no there's no bias there. Th this is not a patriotic thing. I'm, I'm not a patriotic person. This is just a, th this is just what I see. I mean, when Ricky Burns won a world title, I never said he was a pound-for-pound -pound fighter. I never said that Ricky Burns was the best fighter in the UK because he wasn't. I mean, I never said that Alex Arthur was the best fighter in the UK. I never said that Scott Harrison was. I mean, those guys were all world champions, so... But I think I'm more impressed with Josh Taylor than I ever was with those guys. Um, I mean, I mean, he's certainly the best fighter in Scotland. You know, he he would whoop any Scottish fighter around his um, his weight class. I mean, if you put him in with Willie Lemon, who's a seasoned veteran, uh, Ricky Burns, you know, they, these guys are all in the same division as as Josh Taylor. I think he destroys them. So. Um, not only is, is he the best fighter in Scotland, without a doubt, I still think he is also the best fighter in the UK. I mean, I would take him over Terry Flanagan today. Okay, this talks about Terry Flanagan moving up to, to like, well, to wait. You put Terry Flanagan in the ring with Josh Taylor, I think Josh Taylor beats him. I, I honestly think he does, even though Terry Flanagan has had over 30 fights and is a world champion. I, I don't think he's anywhere near as good as Josh Taylor. I really don't. I just think that Terry Flanagan was a, a fighter that was carefully matched. I think he was um, given the right fights, the easiest fights that they could find, and uh, Frank Warren basically elevated him into the position of world champion without him really having to face any world-class competition. So, yeah, in, in my opinion, in my opinion, Josh Taylor is the best fighter at, at the, um, sorry, in the UK. Um, the 140 division is wide open, okay, it won't be long before he's a world champion, as long as Barry McGuigan and Shane McGuigan um, develop him properly, get him the right fights, um, there's no need to take a step backwards, uh, in my opinion, they should continue to fast track him and get him a uh, championship level opposition, like his last two opponents have been, so, yeah, I, I, th I think he's the best fighter in the UK, that's my opinion, my personal opinion, um, nobody has to agree with me, but that's how I see it, and, um, yeah, I don't really know what else to talk about, I just, I really wanted to make a video, you know, I was just bored, I wanted to make a video, I don't know what else to talk about, but, 
Um, there were a few other fights last night that I didn't manage to watch. Danny Jacobs defeated that Luis Arias. Uh, I didn't know anything about Luis Arias, so and I haven't seen the fight, so I can't really comment on it. But one fight that that or one result that did kind of surprise me was Jarrell Miller was able to stop Marius Wack. Now I wasn't surprised that Jarrell Miller won the fight, but I was surprised that he stopped Marius Wack. Because Marius Wack is a a very tough guy with a granite chin who's very big and powerful and. But, but the thing is, I think he was out of shape. Um, I don't think he's the same fighter he was like back when he fought Klitschko and Povetkin and whatnot. I think those fights took a lot out of Marius Wack, and I just think he's past his prime. Um, I wasn't impressed with Jarrell Miller when he fought Gerald Washington. I thought Jarrell Miller looked complete trash in that fight. Just another Chris Ariola, really. And um, I, I can see him being fed to Deontay Wilder as, as an easy opponent. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much all, the, all there is, but... Yeah, I'm really impressed with, with how Artur Baturbiev took care of Enrico Kowali, and I'm looking forward to seeing him in some some unifications in the nearby future. Uh, I'm really impressed with Josh Taylor, best fighter in the UK, in my opinion. Um, there's also another young uh, light welterweight from, from Edinburgh called uh, Jason Easton. I was very impressed with him, too. He had a very good performance against... I've, I've forgotten the guy's name. He fought an unbeaten guy from the... For, from, uh, where was he from again? I, was it Czech Republic? Something like that. I've completely forgotten. I've, I've completely forgotten the guy's name. I had it in my mind a minute ago, and I've just completely forgotten. But yeah, he fought a, a tough, uh, granite-chinned opponent, man. He, he pummeled this guy for, from round one to round 12, and the guy just wouldn't go anywhere. It was fucking mental. But yeah, Jason Easton's another one to watch for, a, a young, unbeaten contender for, from Scotland that I'm very impressed with. So... Yeah, you know, that's all I really want to talk about. Um, let me know what you guys think anyway, and peace out. God bless.